Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Essence, and welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Dua Fragrances. This is one of their most recent releases and it's called Distance, so make sure to stay tuned. So this fragrance was released in 2019, and this is a product that was sent to me for review by the company. So full disclosure, for that reason, I'm going to attempt to review this product using mostly objective statements. So I'll be talking about the way that it smells, the way that it progresses on my skin, the notes, the performance, the longevity, the projection, so on and so forth. I will attempt to stray away from the use of subjective statements. Now, this is a company that makes their own version of more popular niche or designer fragrance. And I like when they do it in the case of resurrecting a long discontinued fragrance. So something like a vintage formulation of something that can only be found online on auction websites for like hundreds of dollars. Or maybe in the case of a niche fragrance that is only available in a certain part of the world. And so they're granting exclusivity to only that particular region. What this company in turn does is it makes it a bit more inclusive so that no matter where you are in the world, you can still access these fragrances for a pretty affordable price. Now, I know a lot of people online do like price per milliliter comparisons, and I get that this is one of the more expensive brands out there. However, they are concentrated at 33%, not 10, not 15, not 20. So just take that into account whenever making such a comment. And so they are a very strong concentration. They are Extract de Parfum strength. This is their version of a more popular niche fragrance called Pure Distance M. I've had the opportunity to review that fragrance on my channel, or not my, my channel, I'm sorry, but on a French channel. And I love the way that that fragrance smells. I think it's very luxurious, very rich, very opulent. And it also, of course, features the note of leather. And so this one does have a little bit of a leather accord in here, actually very much so a leather accord, but it also has some resins. It has labdanum, which creates a bit of sweetness. It's spicy. You have clove, you have cinnamon. It's a very rich and autumnal scent. And I'm excited to be reviewing it at this time of the year. And that's why I thought this would be one of the more appropriate fragrances to review for the the month of December. Thank you so much for watching. Let's go ahead and continue this with a very quick look at the presentation. So the box for this fragrance is identical to the boxes that you'll get for any of their fragrances. If you've seen it once, you've seen them all. It opens up just like this and it has a little bit of an insert on the inside here on the left. If you want to pause your screen to read it, feel free to do so at this moment. And there's also a square silhouette on the right in which the bottle rests. The concentration of the fragrance is written on the side of the box here. And the back of the box has some more information on the company, including their website and the ingredients. The bottle itself has this reflective golden metal plaque here on the front. I actually really like the way that it looks. The cap for this fragrance clicks into place very securely. You can pick this one up from the cap. And the distribution on the atomizer is nice and wide. Let's continue with the smell. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, you will unquestionably get a leather accord. I know in the case of a lot of other leather-based perfumes, Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford is one that is very commonly mentioned. In the case of that one, I know people tend to compare it to the smell of like an ashtray. I 100% don't get that. I find it to be a very agreeable and appealing leather. This one is done quite differently from the way that um, Tuscan Leather is constructed. This is a much sweeter iteration or take on the note of leather. And you have ingredients in here like labdanum, which is a type of resin. It also gives off a sweet smell. You have cloves, you have cinnamon, you also have some mossy notes. So there's a green undercurrent in the composition too. And I like that the leather in here is not overly aggressive and it it's not a rough around the edges kind of a leather. I think we see that in the case of some leather fragrances. And uh, I know for example, it might not necessarily be leather, but all leather and perfumery is actually synthetic. So it's a fantasy note or a chord, I should say. So even in the case of like a Gucci Guilty Absolute, it smells very band-aid-y. I know that's a really weird word to use as a descriptor, but a lot of people compare the smell of that fragrance to the smell of band-aids. You have none of that going on in here. This is what inclines me to say that this is a very agreeable sort of a leather accord that I'm smelling in here. And I personally love the presence of the uh, sweet notes that are found in here. So the cinnamon is not overly strong to the effect that I would compare it to T for Two by Larson Parfumer. And the clove note is not strong enough that I would compare it to like a Musque Ravageur by Frederick Moll. But I feel like 
the concentration of the spicy ingredients are balanced out in such a way that it adds a sweet component without necessarily veering into gourmand territory. It has enough of those spicy and mossy elements in here and the resins without necessarily entering patchouli territory. I feel like the leather note is still the star player of this fragrance. And again, keeping in mind that it's a very easy to get along with type of a leather. It's not aggressive or animalic or overbearing in any way. In a way that the spicy ingredients are used in here in combination with the leather, it actually reminds me of another fragrance by Histoire de Parfum. And this is one that I've had in my collection for some time now, and it's called This Is Not a Blue Bottle 1.4. And so I know they have several different versions or renditions. And in terms of the sweet elements and the way that the resins are used with this sort of uh, leather accord, it actually reminds me of this a lot. And so that's not to say that they're identical or that one was an inspiration of the other. I don't think they are. Inevitably, this was an inspiration of Pure Distance M. But if you have experience with This Is Not A Blue Bottle 1.4, you will get something rather similar in this fragrance, although not 100% similar. But ultimately, I think that if you are in the market for a leather-based offering, but one that has spicy nuances and even veers a little bit in sweet territory, this is one that you out to check out. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, I took a look at the uniqueness and the overall smell. And truth be told, this is not a unique fragrance in the sense that this is inspired by a more popular niche and designer fragrance. The overall smell is one that would have to cater to your personal sensibilities. And so if you're a fan of leather-based fragrances, chances are you will really enjoy this one. If you're not a fan of the more um, dominant fragrances without necessarily being aggressive or rough and tumble, I would still recommend that you check this one out. You might really enjoy it. In terms of the longevity, I got about eight to 10 hours on my skin. So the longevity was really on the high end. Projection was really solid for the first two hours. It didn't become a skin scent up until about the seven to seven and a half hour mark. So the performance on this one is above average. In terms of the versatility, I do find it to be a little compromised. I wouldn't wear this one in the hotter weather. I wouldn't wear it in the summer. I think it might be a little bit too overwhelming despite the fact that the leather isn't too aggressive. I still would consider this one to be a little too overwhelming. And regarding uh, social events or occasions, I can see this one being worn when you're dressed up. Not necessarily something that I would wear casually, but again, these are just recommendations. Uh, take them with a grain of salt and obviously wear your fragrances whenever you wanna wear them despite what recommendation somebody like myself might make. And in terms of the presentation, uh, this is one of the fragrances with the metal plaque label on the front. My final verdict on this one is if you're in the market for a leather-based fragrance, but you want something that's not overwhelming, something that has a bit of a sweet edge, something that has a spicy component to it as well, and that dries down to something green, mossy, earthy, but also grounding and sort of calm, I think you might really enjoy this fragrance. If you're going to compare this to like a Tuscan leather, just know that there really is no comparison. Um, this is done very differently from the way that other leather-based fragrances on the market are done. So obviously to each his own, get your nose on it, make the determination for yourself. And I sincerely hope that you like this one. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review on Distance by Dua Fragrances. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And of course, that includes reviews just like this, top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxing, special guests, interviews, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.